Now, on a special edition of Two on Your Side, Town Hall. The most contagious variant yet. In Western New York, the Delta variant poses a significant risk. Likens the Delta variant spread to the chicken pox. With more COVID cases and more people in the hospital. COVID is real. We update the fight against the Delta variant here at home, just as students go back to class. We want to kids keep kids in school. And with a push to get more shots into arms. The risk is very grave to the Vaccinated. We have voices you can trust. Joining us live are two on your side Town Hall, Western New York, dealing with Delta. Starts now. And we welcome you to the rooftop of our two on your side studios here on Delaware Avenue in downtown Buffalo as we're going to spend the next half hour addressing COVID concerns right here in our community. We're so glad you're here with us. I'm Michael Wooten and I'm Kate Welsh over. We also want to welcome those of you who are watching this streaming live on Facebook tonight. And we're going to start with the obvious question, which is what are we doing on the roof? And very likely the four renowned doctors joining us live tonight likely asked the same question as they climbed up the stairs to get here tonight. But we all know that doing something like this with this many people uh, outside is the safest way to go. And our panel here is unique, representing several different hospital systems as well as a community clinic as well. Yeah, so we're going to show you the people that we're going to be talking with for the next 30 minutes, including Dr. Kevin Shiley. He is Catholic Health's Medical Director of Infection Control. Dr. Sam Cloud is ECMC's Associate Medical Director. Dr. Maria Orellana is a family medicine provider with Sisters Health Center at Deuville on Buffalo's west side. And Dr. Steve Turkovich is Oshai Children's Hospital's Chief Medical Officer. And it's just a pleasure to have you all with us. We so appreciate your time. So before we get into kind of some of the question and answer here, we really want to give you a sense of why we're doing this and kind of set the stage and explain to you how the pandemic is impacting Western New York right now. And yeah, let's start with this. 1,418 Americans died from COVID yesterday. Across the country, more than 100,000 people are battling the disease in the hospital. And just a couple of months ago, these numbers were a fraction of what they are now. When we look at New York and our region, we are in much better shape than a lot of other places. Over the uh, over the past week, the country is averaging 50 new cases per 100,000 people. Look at that. New York State is half at 25 and Erie County, even better than that, at 17 new cases per 100,000. Yeah, so that is the good news. And here is the bad news. Right now in the Western New York region, we have 142 patients in the hospital. On this day, last summer, and let's remember, that's before vaccines, we had 34. Our percent positive rate now is 4.1%. A year ago, it was 1.6. So finally, let's talk about vaccinations. The CDC says almost 62% of the nation's eligible population, that's people 12 and older, are now fully vaccinated. New York State doing quite a bit better here. Slightly more than 70% of people who are eligible to get the jab are now fully vaccinated. So with all that in mind, we want to get now to our panel and ask some questions to all of you. And again, we thank you all for being here. Dr. Shiley, I want to start with you because when we look at those numbers and we just showed them to our viewers compared to last summer, we're not looking good right now, but you juxtapose that with what we're seeing in other parts of the country, particularly down in the south where hospitals are full. Um, they're reaching record high numbers of daily deaths because of COVID-19. Obviously, the Delta variant, a lot to blame for that. I think a lot of Western New Yorkers right now are wondering, is what happened in the south over the past couple of months, is that what we can look forward to here tragically as we start to go indoors more in the fall and the winter? Well, I think we definitely need to be prepared for something like that. It doesn't mean it will happen, but it is much, much better to be prepared. All we know is that we can try and gird ourselves against these types of assaults from the virus. And one of the best ways we can do that is really to have a high vaccination rate within the community. Uh, a lot of other people I am sure have pointed out that the vaccine rates in some of these areas in the South are relatively low compared to this area, but we still have a lot of work to do even here for that. And Dr. Cloud, over to you, looking specifically at hospitals or wondering what you're seeing at ECMC, um, because we keep hearing the vast majority of people that are ending up in the ICU, for example, are unvaccinated. Um, so in your experience, how are hospitals preparing for this as you continue to see sort of this wave coming through? Yeah, so into June, we were really celebrating because as I was discussing, we had a nadir of two patients. And that was exactly what we expected as the vaccination rate approached this 70%. Uh, 
that the, that, that the rate of infection would drop dramatically and we would have a very nice summer um, and maybe have a little bit of a wave in the fall. But unfortunately, um, that didn't last long and we went from two patients to 30 patients within just a couple of weeks, actually. Um, our experience at ECMC has shown that vaccines work because very few of the patients that were admitted um, were vaccinated. And the ones that were admitted um, often had major underlying health conditions like uh, solid organ transplantation or ca active cancer. And so um, the only patients we've had deteriorate to the point of needing uh, to be on a ventilator have been patients who are not vaccinated. So um, I think our experience at ECMC uh, with Delta since um, the early summer has shown that vaccination works and is our hope for the, for the fall and winter. Dr. Cloud, thank you. Um, Dr. Orlana, I wonder if you can talk to us a little bit about the conversations that you're having with patients as you see them uh, at your offices on the west side of Buffalo. I mean, I wonder about people coming in. Um, they don't want to listen to politicians. They don't want to listen to newscasters. Many people are skeptical. But when you get in front of your doctor, you have that relationship and you have that trust, right? What kind of conversations are you having with people and, and conversations maybe you would have with the people watching right now? Yeah, absolutely. I think that a lot of people are a little bit afraid of different things that they're hearing, especially in social media, and they're not getting the right information. So coming to your primary care doctor is very important because you can actually discuss the, the facts and the squash the fears that they may have. You know, one of the biggest fears is why should I get the vaccine if, you know, we need a booster later on? So it's just kind of talking to them and, and teaching them that the vaccine can actually eliminate or, you know, prevent severe infections and even death. So just reiterating the importance of getting vaccinated definitely um, helps uh, you know kind of calm the fear of, of the, the infection and vaccination. Having success so far with that? Absolutely I think yes for sure once you kind of teach the patients what it involves um, getting the vaccine potential side effects and um, eliminating the fear or the myths definitely uh, provides some success with vaccination rates for sure. When we talk about being able to be vaccinated, that's part of it, are people who can get vaccinated and there are certainly people who cannot, among them children. And uh, Dr. Turkovich, you know, the big conversation we've been having recently here on the town hall uh, is back to school. And there are a lot of parents who understandably are a little bit concerned uh, about that and there's anxiety because the majority of school age kids are not able to get vaccinated. What are you seeing in pediatric cases as far as that goes? locally um, because we have been seeing greater numbers of children getting pretty sick. Yeah, we're very fortunate here because the cases in Buffalo are relatively low when you look at that compared to the rest of the country. We know that the number of pediatric cases follows the number of total cases in the community. So in order to keep kids safe, the first thing we need to do is try to keep the numbers really low here. At Oshot Children's Hospital, we have not seen too many kids admitted. In August, we had about six kids admitted, um, none of them terribly ill. One of them did require the ICU a little bit, um, but did not require mechanical ventilation. Uh, all of them were actually eligible to be vaccinated because they're all over 12 years old and none of them actually were. Um, so again, we do know that vaccinations work. But in order to protect the kids, there's three things I think we really need to do. Number one, cocooning, and that is trying to surround them with vaccinated individuals. So in families, in schools, in our community, if you're eligible to be vaccinated, please get vaccinated. Number two is masking, really, really important. If you're indoors and not home, please mask. If you're outdoors in large, large crowds, please mask. And number three, if you're feeling ill, please don't go to work, please don't go to school, isolate and get tested. If we can do those three things, we can keep our numbers low and keep our kids safe.